Let us begin our second section of the present lecture with a voluntary prayer, please. We mentioned six um, different principles that we have considered in the former Bible texts. The transfer oral communication, the dreams and visions, the figurate oral communication, the direct oral communication, the responsibility of the receiver, and also the urim. Now we are considered also that the prophet was not only a communicator from the oral information that he received from, lo from the Lord, but also they write down um, before or maybe after the message was given. And even more than one prophet can be considered as a writer from the same person. We find the cases of David and also from Solomon. According to the biblical references, we see that also the biography of these two main kings in Israel were um, put together the information about the life through different prophets. Now let us see another way how the information always was transferred at this time. Jeremiah 29.1 give us a very interesting overview about this. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captives, and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. It's very, very interesting. So, Jeremiah wrote a letter and was inspired by God. And we find the copy of this letter in the book of Jeremiah because the letter was sent, and was sent to a specific group of people, where the per persons that were deported between the first and the second deportation. Because we find here the people, elders, priests, prophets, and common people. So four different group of people. So at least we know from two prophets living during the time of Jeremiah, but outside of the territory of Judah. Who are they? Beside Jeremiah, yes, that were not in the territory of Judah. Daniel was one. He was deported in the first deportation. Ezekiel was the second one. He was deported in the second deportation. So they received these letters. They received this counsel of the Lord. And let us go here to see how long this letter goes. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. <coughs> And the first begin with the letter that was given to them. Um, and in verse 30, in chapter 30, sorry, say, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, that speaketh the Lord God of Israel saying, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. 
So this letter was included there because the Lord gave the command to write down, not only that to send the letter and nothing else. So we find here the copy of this original letter that was sent from Jeremiah to the deported one. And it's not the only one that we have in the book. So this is another way uh, that this written communication was um, given in different forms. We find in books like the Chronicles of the Kings. We, ha we find this in prophetical forms like the Messianical prophecies that we find also in the five books of Moses and also the historical ones. Uh, this letter from Jeremiah included prophetical elements and also historical elements. So that was a message that was diversified because one part of the message was sent, another part of the message was copied and remained in the manuscripts in the hands of Jeremiah. We have also other examples because also Elijah wrote letters. According to 2 Chronicles 21, 11 and 12 says, Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah and causes the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compelled Judah thereto. And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet saying, and so forth. So that the prophets send messages in written form was usual for the time. So the epistolar, epistolar uh, characteristic that you find in the New Testament, you have it in the Old Testament, but the books are not divided according to letters because the letters are included in the book. So we find Jeremiah and we find also Elijah. Elijah also sent written letter with a message from the Lord. So letters and copies was also another um, way how to transfer this information given by the Lord by inspiration to the prophet. Jeremiah 23, 28 presented the combination uh, between the inspiration, the communication through dream and the message himself. Jeremiah 23, 28 says, the prophet that had a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that had my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, say the Lord? Now, we find here that at contemporaneous, the Lord gave messages in dream and in words. But in both cases, the message is given to be shared with others. The message can be given in dream, can be given in words, but always, without exception, need to be spoken with faithfulness. So the dream needs to be communicated, the words need to be communicated. Both options can be through dream or can be through an oral communication. So Jeremiah 23, 37 go on in different options. Thus shall those say to the prophet, what had the Lord answered thee? And what had the Lord spoken? We know that in the case of Jeremiah and also other uh, prophets in the Old Testament, often kings say to the prophet, please ask to the Lord and then tell me what to do. Especially when they were they didn't know what to do. So the prophet was also used as a consultant. So they were an intermediator. And they asked for specific things to the Lord. So the prophet not only received, but also had the other way of communication. He had the privilege to ask the Lord, to communicate to him. So, the lineal communication, God to person, was also possible, the person, the prophet, to God. And other people ask the prophet, please go and ask 
to God, what to do, how to understand this. So the consultation receives also a revelation. Let us have um, even more diversity. In Jeremiah 36, 26 says, but the king commanded Jeremiah, the son of Hamalek, and Seraiah, the son of Hatriel, and Shelemiah, the son of Abdiel, to take Baruch, the scribe, and Jeremiah, the prophet, but the Lord hid them. So, let us consider now a parallel here, because we have uh, considered this oral transferring of information in the case that God to Moses and then to Aaron and then to Pharaoh. Now, we find another case also and we find God, we find Jeremiah and we find Baruch and then the people. In this case is a difference. Because Moses communicate only oral form to Aaron, what he received from the Lord. And Aaron communicate also only in oral form to Pharaoh. Now, in this case, it's a difference. Because Jeremiah communicated orally, and until here we are the same, to Baruch. But then Baruch write down. And then he read to the people, a written message. So here is the, combo the, the combination between oral and written communication to a third person. So Jeremiah received the message. He was the one. He was the prophet. And it's interesting how the Bible presented this, because he made a difference. Say, Jeremiah the prophet, Baruch the, the, the scribe. So as Aaron was the speak person of Moses, he was not the prophet. Moses was the prophet. Baruch was the writer, was, was the scribe of the word. The only difference is that he remained always in the oral level of communication, in the case of Jeremiah, remained in the written level of communication, but was a third person included in the process. In this case, the scribe. <coughs> but we have also the combination of these other options. According to Jeremiah 45, 1. The word that Jeremiah, the prophet, spoke unto Baruch, the son of Neriah. When he had written these words in a book at the mouth of Jeremiah, in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Joshua, king of Judah. So God spoke orally to Jeremiah. Jeremiah spoke orally to Baruch. And Baruch was the written messenger or right the message. <clears throat> and then in Jeremiah 25, 2, they which Jeremiah the prophet spoke unto all the people of Judah and unto all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, especially during, during the first period of the ministry of Jeremiah, he was without the scribe. So Baruch was not right from the beginning of the ministry of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah began to communicate orally and write also uh, these messages too. So we find here the diversity again when Baruch was not present. After Baruch came, especially in the moment when Jeremiah was persecuted, also his life was in danger, was very dangerous for him to appear in public. And then Baruch was sent. And Baruch began to read. After this, also Baruch was in danger, and both of them were hid by the Lord. Now, the book of Jeremiah is very interesting because it's divided in two main sections. The message that is giving 
to the people of God and the message that is given to the Gentiles or to the hidden or to the neighbor nations around the people of God. And this is a praxis that we find during the Old Testament prophet books. That you find one section that is completely dedicated to other nations and other message that was an internal message, only for the people of God. So Jeremiah, one section of the book, and he expressed clearly this section now in Jeremiah 46. And we find this in Josiah and in the main prophets, even in the minor prophets. Um, so we find messages that are from general knowledge, but not for the people of God. This is one characteristic of this, this diversity. So the prophets not only write down for the people of God, they write also for other nations, for other people that were not the people of God. But they sent also messages to individuals or private persons. In Agai 1.1 says, in the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Agai the prophet, and to Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying. So the message was given to the leadership of the people of God, was given to the governor, to the political power, and was given to the spiritual leader, to the high priest. And this message was given to individuals or group of people. And in this way, we find here at least three main groups of information that we have considered until now. Two individuals, exclusively to the people of God, and also to nations, to hidden, to completely group of peoples, and also individuals that were not part of the people of God. In Daniel 9, 2, we read, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, wherefore, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. So again, one prophet confirmed what another prophet kept saying. And when you consider 1 Corinthians chapter 14, say the spirit of the prophet is submitted to the spirit of the prophet. So we find here this principle. So Daniel say, I studied the book of Jeremiah. And he was a prophet. And say, and now came in fulfillment the 70 years of the desolation. So. Let us go to different elements also in the New Testament. Luke 4, 17 says, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And this is a very special point. Because Jesus was fulfilling in, in the process of fulfill the same message. So it's an identification between the message with the messenger. And was Jesus himself. So let us open the Bible and see exactly this messianical prophecy. Look for In verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set a liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened unto him. And he began to say unto them, This day 
is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? And because of this, they wanted to kill him. So we see here the completely and beautiful coordination between a message given as a messianic prophecy in the Old Testament. And now, the same one that gave the message is in person, reading the message and saying, I am the one. Because the message was given by God to the prophet. The prophet was only a channel to receive the message. So Jesus himself gave this message, this prophecy, and he won in himself fulfill it. So, the identification of the message with the messenger is an extremely important element that identifies the true uh, fruit of the spirit of prophecy. In Acts 8, 34-35, we find also other elements. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself? or of some other men. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. So we find now here a third person included. So Yesaya received this message from the Lord and it's a messianical prophecy completely in the chapter 56 about the suffering, the passion, and the death of Jesus Christ himself. Now, the Eunuch was reading, and he didn't know it's something that will happen in the future, already happened, describe the prophet his own suffering, what is going on in this chapter. Then, another person, in this case Philip, that was a deacon, was sent by the Holy Spirit to this person to explain and say, this person is not the prophet, it's Jesus. And this is already fulfilled. And in this way, we find here the perfect connection between the message was given, the development of the message, and then the fulfillment of it, and the explanation of the same message. Because when you go to... Isaiah 56, <coughs> excuse me, it's, uh, no, it's not 56, one second, it's um, 53, excuse me, it's Isaiah 53. So in all the chapter began in the following way. Who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And then came all the description of the passion of Jesus. And this message from Isaiah 53, when we go to Daniel, chapter 9 and one second in verse 26 so, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and so forth. So the main point that related Daniel chapter 9, 26, that the Messiah be cut off fulfill the principle presented in the messianical prophecy from Isaiah 53. When we go to the Gospels, it's obvious when this is confirmed. And now, this deacon, Philip, go to the eunuch 
and explain to him that this person was Jesus himself. So we see the extension and the diversity of the same message through the Old Testament until the New Testament. So it's a framework and completion of the message. <clears throat> Second Peter 1, 20 and 21 is already known for us. And here we find the connection between the inspiration, revelation, and the spirit of prophecy. Now, let us study the prophet himself and the concept as such. So the word um, prophet, as it is used in the Old Testament, came from two Hebrew words. And you have this on the screen. It's rohe, that means to see, and is translated as seer. If you remember when we have read these Bible texts about David, was saying, and they wrote about him, the prophet and the seer, and they were two different persons. And the point is why this difference is done, why they don't wrote the prophet, why they make this difference. They say the prophet and the seer. Um, and the point is very interesting because the first time that we find this concept translated as the seer is in 1 Samuel 9, 9, and we have also considered already, and have to do only when the prophet sees something. So the concept seer is a limitation of the concept prophet because the seer means receive only or see only things. The prophet included a seer because they received in many different options. Therefore, we find a second word in Hebrew that complement the concept rohe, and this is navi, with, which means to declare. So in both elements, to see and to declare, we have the completely concept of a prophet. So the prophet not only see, not only receive information, but also transfer, declare, communicate this same information. So the concept seer and the concept prophet or rohe and navi uh, complement the uh, ways how the gift of prophecy is given. Um, so. Also in Greek, you have um, some variation of the same concepts in the New Testament, but generally follow the same principle. Let us consider two aspects that are bas basic in the relation to the gift of prophecy that are expressed in Daniel 7, verse 12 and verse 2. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matter. Daniel speak and say, I saw in my vision by night. So in these Bible texts that are related generally with the same subject, we find uh, several elements that belong to the spirit of prophecy. So first of all, we see that Daniel had a dream and also visions. So the Lord appeared to him in vision and speak to him in a dream. Then the second step is that he wrote down the dream. So everything that we saw, what he saw, and everything that was spoken to him, he wrote down. So, what this means? That the relation between the receiving and the transferring made completely the gift of the spirit of prophecy. If you only receive the message without transferring, you don't complete the process of the spirit of prophecy because the spirit of prophecy has the purpose to be shared to be transmitted, the information, the content, the communication giving. 
So he received it in two different ways, in dream and in vision. And in both cases, he wrote down. And therefore, we have Daniel 7. <coughs> so the prophet received the information, and then he transmitted to people. So these two aspects of his work was always a reality. And this is the reason why we have the Holy Scriptures. Because they receive it and they write down. So the combination between the seer and the prophet included these two main elements. So the seer see and the prophet transmit. Now, the spirit of prophecy included the two elements, to receive the message and to give the message. We find in Ezekiel 40, verse 4, a wonderful Bible text that summarizes in a spectacular way how this is. And the man say unto me, Son of man, behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears, and set thine heart upon all that I shall show thee. For to the intent that I might show them unto thee are thou brought hither. Declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. So, it's a problem because the graphic is not translated, but it's no matter. So God said to the prophet, you need to look with your eyes. You need to hear with your ears. And you need to set thine heart upon it, upon the message that you receive. Everything that you have seen. And then you need to declare it to my people, to the house of God. So look here, retain in your mind, because according to the Hebrew principle, heart is a synonym of mind. So you see, you hear, you retain in your mind, and then you transfer to the people of God. Everything that I have entrusted to you. Ezekiel 44 is an emblematical Bible text because in some way summarizes all this process. So to see, to hear, to keep in mind everything, and then to communicate to others. So let us consider now um, more in detail these ways or these methods how information was given from God to the prophet with the purpose to give to his people and also to the world. So Numbers 12, 6. I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. So according to this quotation, visions and dreams are means used to reveal God's work. During the patriarch patriarchal age, we find this way of communication. In Job 33, 14 through 17, present this also. For God spoke it once, yea, twice, yet men perceived it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep fell it upon men, in a slumbering upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men and sealed the instruction that he may withdraw men from his purpose and hide pride from men. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Again, this Bible text emphasizes these two main ways or means that God used to communicate. So we find here again, as in numbers, the dreams and the vision. But it's very interesting that also this Bible text in Job explains us the reason why this happened, why the Lord wished to communicate <coughs> to human beings, that they changed his way, that he accepted the word, and that he improved in his own life. So the, the spirit of prophecy 
is not only a transmission of information. It's not only the mean that God used to communicate his will to human beings. Have the purpose that a human being change his life. This is the reason why the Holy Scriptures came to us. So that we learn in different ways how we need to behave. We find biographies that explain to us the main mistakes that human beings committed in different personalities that we find here, main characters that show us the weakness of human characters and how to overcome and how to avoid to do such things. So the spirit of prophecy has the purpose primary to give the message of the Lord, not only for the pleasure to know, but with the purpose to transform, to change, to improve the human kind. This is the main purpose that are presented in the sec second section of these Bible texts from Job 33. We have mentioned the patriarchal age, the Lord used the visions and also the dreams to present the messages. So now, which is the difference between vision and dream? Because it's a difference. And the Lord himself make a difference because say, I will reveal myself through visions and through dreams. So let us consider which is the difference. The vision is a supernatural way through, through which God communicates his will to his servants, the prophets. And generally, the person is awake. We find this in different cases, and we will consider it. The dream is you, God used the unconscious condition of the prophet and give the message in this condition. The person is asleep and receives a dream. So dream is always in an unconscious condition of the human being in a sleep condition. The vision can be happen also when the person is asleep, wake up, and then he receives the vision. But a vision happen and the person is not in a sleepy condition. So we see here the following ways. For example, about the vision. The prophet is awake, according to Daniel 10, 7 and Acts 9, 3 and 7. In these two cases, from the Old and the New Testament, they receive a vision. So the person is not asleep, is awake, is in a conscious condition of the situation. And happen in, in any moment during the day. So the person is not asleep, is in a completely uh, conscious condition, like in Acts 10.3. But this can happen also at night, not only at day. So the vision is not exclusively from the day. It can be in the night. But always the prophet receives it in a uh, real manner, like in Genesis 46 too. But the same vision can be given through a dream. And this is in Numbers 12.6. So the difference is not easy always to find out. Because during the vision, the prophet, the prophet lost conscience of what surrendered him. And also when he's in a dream, is also unconscious in both situations. But the difference between the vision and the dream is that when the prophet will receive the vision, he's conscious. And then become unconscious of the surrender. When receive the dream, is unconscious. So it's not easy to find a remarkable difference between the vision and the dreams, always. But generally, 
to make easy the understanding of it. We can say that the dream refers always when the prophet is asleep. So he is a, in an unconscious condition and the vision is an apparition, is a revelation. The, the, the prophet is in a real condition, so conscience one, and happened to him that a revelation came to him as a vision. That can happen also at night and happen in dreams too because we have the references from Daniel 2.19 and Acts 12.9. And in both cases, when the vision came also in a dream, refer to the same phenomenon. We have also Bible texts that use both dream and visions as synonyms, like in Joel 2.28 and Acts 2.17. <coughs> So, we will try to make a difference between uh, different forms of dreams because they are also different ways of dreams. The literal sleep of the prophet, so the prophet went to sleep, so is asleep completely and then received the dream. This is a literal sleep plus an eye vision, that is Job 33.15. But can be that the person is on bed thinking. We find the case of Nebuchadnezzar. Do you remember? He was busy with the thought what will happen after him, how the Babylonian Empire will be after him. And then he received this dream. So a dream as an independent mean of revelation. And the person was not unconscious at the beginning of the dream. In the case of Nebuchadnezzar, because the Bible says that he was concerned, he was thinking about this. And then the Lord gave to him the dream, according to Daniel 1.17. So we will close this uh, section here. And we have um, different readings to recommend it to you. One is the book, The Spirit of Prophecy, pages 18 to 28, then a Step to Christ, chapter 12. It's almost all the chapter. And Testimony Treasures, volume 2, pages 303 to 316. And now the homework for this lecture. So you need to write an explanation to the relationship between inspiration and modes of transmission of the biblical message, according to the context of this lesson. So you need to write an explanation in order to express your understanding, obviously with biblical quotations that support it, that explain the relationship between the inspiration and the way how the inspiration is given, how the biblical message is transmitted. And at least you need to mention seven different ways. We have considered more than 13, so at least you need to mention seven of it with the corresponded uh, Bible explanation or example. And please don't make to me a list. Yeah, Number one, number two, number three in the seven examples. You need to write down Similar as you write the definition, you need to write, to make an essay about it, to write down. Don't make me a list, not one paragraph, and then say, and now follow the different ways. Inspiration in this, and in continuation, the seven ways how this happened. No, you need to write down. You need to describe. You need to explain. Yes? Transmission at we, least. Yes, yeah, seven. At yeah. least uh, seven. Should we also have seven Bible verses? or? For sure, because you need to prove. Because if you use this way, you need to say that really exists. Yeah. yeah, so we should probably have at least one Bible verse for each. Probably. Yeah. But please don't give to me a list of things. Mm 
you need to write down. Explain carefully and connect one sentence with the other sentence that is a completely flow of information. Okay, questions about this? Homework? Huh?